today we're going to go over um, our multimeter that we sell for checking the components inside a shower. This is a fairly cheap multimeter, um, costs about £10 at the time of making the video and it's good for checking everything inside the shower. Um, it comes with instructions inside but this short video should help to make you understand how to use the usual parts. We also sell this slightly more expensive, the, the, the slightly more expensive multimeter that's um, it's going to be cost about 60 or 70 pounds. The, the, the advantage of this is that you can use it using one hand, but it's really more for the professional. The, um, the small yellow one is good for everything inside the shower. We're now going to use our multimeter to check if there's power getting to the shower. This is the only test you need to do to, uh, that you need to do live. So there's a few precautions you need to take. At the isolating switch, you need to make sure that it's, turn, it's turned off um, before you remove the cover. And the reason we do that is just in case when you remove the cover there are any loose wires inside. We can have a look at this and there's no loose wires and so we can see everything looks pretty much okay at the moment. Then go back and switch on the power ready to test ready to test and see if we're getting power coming to the multimeter switch the multimeter on and we set it to to about 300 that's um the uh, the voltage in the uk is normally 230 volts but it can be anywhere between 220 and 230 so now all we need to do is carry out the test and with the multimeter set then we just need to pop the two probes into the terminal block here. Now obviously there's nothing here because it's not wired in, but you should be getting a reading, as I say, between 230 and 220. Now, as long as you've got a power reading here, that proves that there's power coming into the unit. And so therefore, because that's live, the rest of the, power, the, rest of the unit should work, and we carry out the other tests after that. But we now know that this is this has power so we now go back and switch the uh, and switch the uh, isolating switches off so when we go back to the isolating switches that um, basically switch it switch it back to off and with a pull cord switch switch it switch it off and tie the string up out of the way so nobody can come and um, turn it on by mistake often what people will see is they'll see this switch in the uh, in the off position and they'll think oh that's normally on so they'll come past it and switch it uh, and switch it on which is not much fun if you're working in a shower it can really spoil your day that so make sure it's switched off and then just to make sure that there's not no further problems stick something over it so it's pretty obvious that there's that there's somebody working on it, there's something going on with the shower so that's how to check the voltage and how to stay safe we have a a, a longer um, more involved uh, safety video, you might want to take a look at that before working on the shower. Now we're going to do some continuity checks. We know that there's power getting into the unit, we've switched it off again to make sure it's safe and we're going to check continuity. So with our meter we need to set it down here to the continuity. Now if it has continuity the meter will bleep and when it bleeps, I better switch it on, when it bleeps we know that continuity is there. The bleep is quite quiet so you maybe have to listen carefully to hear it. But here we go. So this is the power coming in and this is a solenoid valve. I want to see if there's power getting from here into the solenoid valve. And you can hear that. This is the on off switch. If I switch this switch off there's no power getting from the inlet connector here to the solenoid. Switch it back on again and you can hear it bleeping away. Now you can use the same test to check if the power is getting to the, the switches that control the elements. The switches are in here. I think I can reach one of them here. And you can hear that there is power going from here up to the element switches. There's one or two other checks we can do which I'll show you in a moment. One of the other faults you have with showers is the thermal cutout. That, that fails, and if that fails, there's no continuity across the thermal cutout. So there's power goes in one end and not out the other. I'm going to do a test on that, and what I'll do is I'll, I've got a spare thermal cutout here to let you see. Here we go. Just makes it a little easier to see. So the meter's still set in exactly the same way, and what we do is we check that there's power going across the thermal cutout. And you can hear it bleeping away. Now, if, the, if this thermal cutout was faulty, there would be no noise and therefore no continuity across the thermal cutout. Also, you can check that um, 
switches inside the shower. This is typical of a shower, a switch that's a micro switch that's inside a shower. Um, and so you can check if that's working properly or not. Basically the same thing. If you connect the two terminals like so, um, this is a wee bit more difficult to do with just two hands, but if you can hear me switching on and off. And basically if this is fault, if this switch was faulty when the button's pressed in, there would be once again no noise, no continuity. As this is a good switch. And that's most of the, that's the, the continuity checks that you can do with a shower. Here we're going to use the multimeter to check a solenoid valve. So just to set the multimeter up, we'll turn it on first, and then we need to set it to uh, on our multimeter to 20k ohms, which is down here. Um, and what we're doing is measuring the resistance across, across the coil in the um, in the solenoid valve. And so um, I think maybe be able to leave that still there, and so you can see this. Um, it, it, the polarity doesn't really matter as far as this is concerned because we're measuring resistance and this solenoid has a resistance of 3.7 ohms basically anything over 3.4 and the solenoid is good anything less than that um, the solenoid's faulty so uh, often you'll get a zero reading on the solenoid um, but uh, if it's faulty but normally anything less than 3.4 and the solenoid needs replaced in this test, we're going to test the resistance in the elements. Um, first of all, so first of all, we need to set the meter, turn it on, and we don't. It's not K on ohms this time. It's just set for ohms. So down here, set for 200 ohms, and we test the elements. And so, once again, the polarity doesn't matter, but we're checking the resistance across the elements. So that's the live and the neutral. And in this element, we have about 16 ohms and then down here is the other element um, and we have, I don't know for this one, uh, about 12 ohms, about 12 ohms for this one. So 16 ohms and 12 ohms, that's okay. If the element's faulty, there'll be really no reading at all. It'll read zero or alternatively, you'll get some really weird, uh, weird readings. The, the meter will be jumping about all over the place. Um, and so that's all you need to do to check the resistance in the in the ohms in the in the ohms in the elements. The the one thing that some people have said when they've come back and they've said that they've had the same reading from both elements, that's very seldom that happens because most showers have a, a element of two different sizes. And for example, an eight kilowatt shower will have a three kilowatt element and a five kilowatt element. So you'll definitely get different readings from them. And the same with a 9, you'll get a 4 and a 5 or whatever. But most showers have, the elements are two different ratings. So expect them to be both different. Really just to sum up and show how useful a multimeter is. A very inexpensive uh, piece of kit. And it's incredibly useful for lots of testing lots of other things. So, for example, we can use this to test the continuity of this coil of wire. If, for example, we expected that there was a problem in this coil, that the wire may be broken somewhere, it's easy to check just by connecting the two ends and we hear the bleep. So we know that this wire, is the, the uh, there's no problems with the wire, it's not broken in anywhere. And the other thing is where it becomes really useful in the home is to say to check a fuse. And so with a fuse, this is the standard 13 amp fuse, and so we connect both ends like this. And if we, hear the th if we hear the meter bleeping, we know that the fuse is good, no bleep, and then we would know that that fuse is faulty. The other thing it's very useful for is checking batteries. Now, it's a different setting for checking batteries. That um, It's this settings up here. These are the DC settings. And so what you've first of all got to do is kind of have a guess at what you think the voltage that you're expecting from the battery. Now, these batteries are 1.5 amp batteries. So we've set it to two. And we'll check this, we'll check these two batteries first. It's an old Duracell. I've given this away by saying it's an old Duracell. Um, but we connect up both ends like this. And, um, let me see, quite fiddly. But you can see that we're getting 0.8 of a volt out of this. Um, and then here's the other one just to prove that we've got a good battery here. And 
you can see this as well. You can see it's slightly over 1.5, 1.7. Just frankly, it's nearly 1.6 volts. This is a new battery, so we know that this battery is dead and this battery is good. Um, the other thing that we have is we've got another one of these sort of small type camera batteries here, um, and so to check this, we need to set this to 20 volts because this um, is supposed to be a 12 volt battery. So we'll check this again. Around that way to make it easier. Oops. And uh, so there we go. And as you can see, it's 12.5 volts. So that means that this battery is very good. So you can use this to check any batteries. A really useful piece of kit. And um, pretty good value for £10 in terms of the number of things it can do. As I mentioned before, we've got this slightly more professional machine that was going to work at about £60. It's much easier to use and to handle, but in truth, this does exactly the same job.